Should Texas send back Biden's federal education funds? It's April 23rd, 2024, and these are your headlines. With the Biden administration announcing plans to radically change the federal Title IX program to give protections, get this, to biological men, Representative Brian Harrison of Midlothian's calling on House Speaker Dade Phelan to conduct interim hearings on removing federal funds from Texas's schools entirely. So some background here. On Friday, the Biden administration rolled out a nearly 1,500-page rewrite of the rules for Title IX. That's the federal civil rights law originally designed to prohibit sex-based discrimination in education. The new version would add gender identity as one of those protected classes, which Harrison says will create a, quote, public education emergency and put Texas students in imminent danger. He wrote, beginning August 1st, 2024, the Biden administration is going to force Texas schools to allow sexual predators in elementary girls' school bathrooms and in girls' locker rooms. It will be a federal offense if students and teachers fail to use preferred pronouns. Men will be allowed to steal academic and athletic scholarships from women. Our campuses will be returned to the disastrous prior policies of sending sexual misconduct cases to campus kangaroo courts. He went on to say, furthermore, men will soon be federally required to be allowed to play in women's sports, likely undoing protections our legislature proudly enacted. The Texas legislature has the power to stop this. We must act now. Now, Representative Harrison noted that the only reason Texas would be subject to the new rewrite of the rules of Title IX is because of its reliance, the state's reliance, on voluntary federal education funding. He said Texas must act like a sovereign state, stop prostrating ourselves at the altar of the almighty federal government, and combat the move to a post-constitutional America. To that end, Harrison's calling on Speaker Dade Phelan to issue an interim charge for the Public Education Committee, that's a committee that Harrison himself serves on, to develop a plan to transition away from all K-12 federal education funding, protect Texans from these new Title IX requirements, and eliminate the crushing federal regulations which for decades have burdened our public schools. He said Texans should lead the nation in defending state sovereignty, the Constitution, and the next generation. Phelan, by the way, has not yet issued interim charges for the House committees. Two residents and a local grassroots organization have filed a federal lawsuit against the city of Kerrville, for its recently passed ordinance targeting canvassers, peddlers, and solicitors. In a filing last week, residents Terry Hall and Rachel Vickers, alongside We the People, Liberty in Action, argued that the Kerrville City Council passed the ordinance to stifle political opposition. They specifically argue the ordinance makes the price of participating in civic matters too costly, too burdensome for those challenging incumbents. Now, Kerrville's ordinance defines solicitors and peddlers as those who push for someone to buy a product or service, and they require that they obtain a license in order to operate within the cities. Canvassers, on the other hand, religious political activism, do not require a license. However, all three groups have their hours limited from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., cannot trespass on property where there's a no solicitor sign, and cannot work on public sidewalks. Now, the lawsuit referred to these restrictions as, quote, flagrantly, violating the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, citing a similar case back in 2015 in which citizens challenged local speech stipulations and won. Federal courts have historically accepted content-based regulations by city. However, like the 2015 case mentioned, some recent Supreme Court decisions have ruled against local ordinances. The Kerrville lawsuit was filed in the San Antonio Division of the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Texas, Terry Hall, the main plaintiff, is also the co-founder of We the People, Liberty in Action, a 501c4 based in the Hill Country that was heavily involved in the March 5th Republican primary. Due to the group's success in the primary, a source theorized to Texas Scorecard that the city council's conspicuous timing in pushing the anti-solicitation ordinance could be related. They've been called the Texas Kingmakers. They're the biggest political force in the Lone Star State. And most Texans have no idea who they are, what they want, or even that they exist. Hubris, the Texas Kingmakers, a documentary by Texas Scorecard, now streaming on all major platforms. 
A last story is an update on a story from yesterday, actually. An opponent of Granbury Independent School District's latest bond proposal was arrested and charged with a felony over temporary permits for a borrowed school bus, which has been featured in a no bond bus tour sponsored by local families concerned about district spending and taxes. And by the way, that's right. We do have a local elections going on in a lot of parts of the state. I voted early. I've got the sticker. It doesn't really count, right? If you, if you didn't get the sticker, did you really vote? Uh, so if you do have some of these elections going on in this area, and you probably do, uh, be sure to go out and vote. Uh, but getting back to this story, the bus driver, Steve Biggers, called Friday's arrest by Hood County Sheriff's deputies, quote, harassment and interfering with a political campaign. Now, Biggers borrowed the bus from a friend and has been driving it around the district as part of a campaign cautioning voters about the tax impact of the bond election. By the district's own calculation, Granbury ISD's proposed $161 million bond will cost property taxpayers $315 million when you factor in interest. The bond proposal is the district's third in three years. The last two efforts failed, and Biggers believes local officials are determined to ensure that this year's bond passes. Hood County Sheriff Roger Deeds publicly supported Granbury ISD's 2023 bond, and Biggers says that the deputy who arrested him is married to a Granbury ISD teacher. Now, Bigger says the no bond bus tour will be back on the road. Early voting in the special bond election is underway now through April 30th. This goes for all local elections, by the way, across the state. And election day is Saturday, May 4th. For more of today's stories, go to texasscorecard.com.